copy written production of the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated and is intended for the sole purpose of informing our Recreation Center members. Any duplication, copying, transmission, broadcast or use including electronic and social media is strictly prohibited without the prior written consent from the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated. Thank you for watching. We have a few announcements from Jean as far as communications. She handles our communications for the SAC. Hi, everybody. Uh, there were handouts in the back. I don't believe there were enough. If you're putting your email on the sign-in sheet, let's put it around again and let me know if you need a copy. And I can send it to you. Or it will be on the web. The guests need to sign in. Committee meeting members need to sign in. In the back of the room, there are um, folders containing anything you might want to read, the bylaws, uh, the policies, etc. Or back there if you have a need to read them. We also have a copy of the um, AMSU survey results. This is not to leave the room. It's 350 pages. We don't want to read it again. But you're certainly welcome to read it if you have a Uh, again, our, the, uh, one of the things that I was asked for is a syllabus for a meeting from now until uh, November. That's what was handed out, is a revised syllabus. Uh, it's still, it still may change, uh, but I gave it my best shot. Uh, what you can see is that today we are on pickleball data. And also, we're going to have a presentation by Tom Clinton. He's, yep. Uh, and then the next meeting will be on how do you compare apples and oranges? In other words, when, how do you put together a criteria sheet so when we look at alternatives, you can decide, you can say, this has this criteria, this meets this criteria, doesn't meet that criteria, and you can compare them for your own, own purposes. From there, uh, my proposal is to delve into the Performing Arts Center for two meetings uh, to talk about it, uh, which is you know the whole the whole shebang. Then we have the Fourth of July, uh, which thankfully there's no meeting, and then uh, we uh, on seven fourteen hopefully we'll get into alternatives that people have developed for Mountain View. We'll have three meetings for meetings on each alternative to discuss the pros and the cons. Similarly, later on, we will have three meetings to discuss alternatives for Lakeview. Both centers are about the same age. Um, then we will wrap up before the September board meeting with a comparison of all the alternatives and the recommendations. That will then <coughs> conclude the committee's uh, meeting work. The, co the co chairs will then have to take that, draft up a report, circulate that for the committee's review, uh, finalize it, put a PowerPoint presentation together, and then review the recommendations for the information of the board, not for a board vote. Then from there, the member, uh, we will have town halls. So the members can see the alternatives and what, what's being recommended. So the, the whole, I know it's slow, I know it's long, but we got, we wanted to make sure that we got a very broad level of input. So when we, when we say this is the way we want to go, it's by as many people as we can reach. Uh, with that, Karen, why don't I turn it over to you and thank you for 
preparing all this data. Yeah. Well. Okay, so um, I'm Karen McAdam, and I think many of you know that I am an avid pickleball player, but I have tried to not make that the ad. Uh, no, mic is out here. We don't have a microphone. Everybody needs a teacher. Speak with your theater voice. I, I yeah, am a teacher. Up here. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, are you okay here, everybody? So, let me just. Uh, I might need to have that clear. Yeah. So, uh, I'm one of those people that was very characteristic of 10 years ago who moved to Sun City, had never seen pickleball played before, and I thought, huh. Look, they're building a big pavilion at Marinette. I'll go see what it's all about. And I learned to play pickleball and fell in love with it. As a matter of fact, I've told some people that I felt like it saved my life. Because when I moved here, um, I was involved with a lot of elder care. And I was, my life had changed tremendously. And it wasn't very exciting. And I found that pickleball became the thing that um, really gave me community, gave me socialization above and beyond my elder care responsibilities. But that's not the focus of this today. What I'm going to do today, as the title says here, is to talk about pickleball nationally in the United States. The United States is by far and away the country where pickleball is most present. But it's spreading around the world, but also in Sun City. So the first few slides are just going to be giving you some, uh, a picture of what the development of pickleball is like on a national level. So pickleball traces its roots back to Bainbridge Island off the coast of Seattle, 1965, where um, three fathers who were, uh, yeah, three fathers who were trying to figure out how to keep their children occupied, went out into the woods and cleared a little space and grabbed some paddles and you know like a ping pong paddle and a wiffle ball and made this game up, uh, and. Um, so a lot of people describe it as a cross between ping pong, badminton, and tennis. Uh, so just anecdotally, this is what tennis pros will tell you who are exposed to pickleball. They will tell you that the normal thing is for in, pickle, in tennis is that you take a group of absolute beginners. So let's say you take six people out for an hour long uh, experience an introduction to tennis. And after an hour, they're completely exhausted and they're really, really frustrated. You take the same group of people out there to pickleball, and within 15 minutes, they're just having an absolute blast. It's a supremely easy game to learn. You don't need to have a lot of um, athletic ability. And I hear, see some of my pickleball colleagues over here shaking their heads saying, yes, that's true. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, and it's also enjoyable well into your later years. This morning, Jim was playing at in the pavilion. He's 90 or 91. I can't 91, remember. He's 91. 90. He's 91 years old. Oh, Frank is 91. I'm Jim's 90. Jim 90. Frank 91. So we not only have an octogenarian group, we actually have nonagerians that are playing pickleball. And it's like you know, what other sport can you pursue that actively into your later years? Um, so another kind of a feature about this is that this. Uh, it is a popular open play format. Open play means that you don't have to organize a group of four people to go play and say, would the three of you be able to meet me so that we can have a doubles game at such and such a time at such and such a place? Instead, this is a sport that supremely lives from, this is open play, anybody can come, and you'll just play with three people. A game usually takes about 12, maybe 15 minutes. First, the first team to 11 wins. It's not a very long game. And um, as a result, it ends up becoming a very, very social kind of an environment. So you're switching the people that you play with all the time. It's like perfectly suited for seniors. Um, and then finally, just as it's gone from being a niche sport to being mainstream, I think this is the thing that I don't have to really do very much to convince you that this is true. You don't need to have a special cable channel in order to watch the pickleball on TV any longer, do you? It's just everywhere that you go. I mean, it's LeBron James, it's Tom Brady, they're, I, Bill Gates, Bill and Melinda Gates have just said that they're just absolute nuts about pickleball. You know, it's something that is, is reaching into every corner of the United States. And it's interesting too, because it's not something that is restricted for seniors. For a long time, people thought that pickleball was, oh, this is something that seniors play because they can't handle tennis. 
you know, tennis is too hard for them, so they've learned to play pickleball. It's actually, and we'll see some data later on, I think, um, about who's playing pickleball the most. By the way, please feel free to stop me and ask questions or challenge things um, anytime. All right, let's move on to the next one. So this is the total number of pickleball players in the U.S. by year. Um, you know, doing research online today is quite a challenge. We have more numbers beyond this, but it's kind of, you start realizing as you look and see what this person says and what this person says, oh, they must have been looking at the same data. But you can see this growth in pickleball in the United States that in, and this apparently was in August of 2022, almost 9 million people in the United States that played pickleball. On January 1st of 2023, so this is still considered 2022 data, that number had gone up to 36.5 million people. And on March 29th of 2023, YouGov, which is a marketing uh, research uh, organization, said that the number that have played in the last 12 months has moved to 48 million Americans. So we have whatever it is, 350 million Americans in the United States. That means that it's something that 14% of all Americans have played pickleball in the last 12 months. Um, so let's go on to the next, uh, let's see about that one. Um, here are, so the next one is some key pickleball stats from 2023. So you see this number was as January 1st of this year, that number has gone up to 48 million as of the end of March. This, I think, is a really important um, number right here. The largest age bracket of pickleball players, so almost 30% of the total, are between 18 and 34 years of age. What does this mean for Sun City? I told you my story. Anybody that moved to Sun City 10 years ago was coming, likely, with almost no prior experience in pickleball. What's happening today is that almost everybody that moves here has had some kind of experience with pickleball. They at least know what the sport is, and many of them will already have been active players. So that's a huge change um, there. Um, this number right here, 10,320 places in the United States to play pickleball. And it's quite interesting to see uh, state by state, city by city, you can find data. Seattle still has the highest concentration, being closest to Bainbridge Island, I think. But um, this is a sport that is is expanding into every corner of the United States. Uh, locally, one of the things that happened on May 2nd of last year, uh, Pickleball Kingdom opened in Chandler. This was the first time, and at the time it was built, it's an indoor, completely climatized, single-story pickleball facility in Chandler with 15 courts and locker rooms and a little mezzanine there. Um, at the time was the largest indoor, uh, it's an indoor facility with outdoor surfaces. So this is not a gymnasium with the wooden floor. This is the outdoor surface that you want to be able to play on in an indoor climatized place. And they're doing so well that the owner there is I think already building or planning to build in on the west side of the valley as well. Uh, and there are corporations that are springing up across the United States that do nothing more than build indoor pickleball courts. And if you think about it, you know, where is an indoor pickleball court not appropriate? Here we need it because of the heat. In Florida you need it because of the rain. In Minnesota you need it because of the, su because of the snow. So it's just it's one of those things that by building indoor pickleball courts you end up dealing with a number of issues. One is you're not weather dependent, and secondly, the noise is contained inside of walls. That's one of the, uh, almost any place that has built outdoor pickleball courts or has converted uh, tennis courts into pickleball courts, uh, you can read in their local paper people complaining about the noise factor. So there's a number of reasons with that. You can fit a lot more people into a lot smaller space. So instead of having you know, 10 contacts with the ball over a 15 second period of time, you've got 40. And it's also, it's not a soft ball, it's a hard ball. And it's, you know, the pickleball players love to hear that pop of their ball off that. But if you live 350 feet away from one of those uh, courts, it can, um, it can be very disturbing. 
Um, so here we see the participation rates for popular sports and activities, and this is an interesting thing right now that biking and running are still slightly ahead of pickleball, but with that number having been raised to 48 million, it's neck and neck with the top sports, this was top sporting activities for people all across the United States. Um, way more people that play pickleball than play golf, for instance. All right. Um, so the state showing the most interest in pickleball currently. Um, I'm not sure how you measure this, but somebody thought that they did. I don't know if it's Google searches or what it is, but you can see here that, um, so Utah was the benchmark at 100%. Arizona is showing the second most interest in Minnesota, the third. We have a lot of Minnesotans, by the way, in the pickleball club. Uh, so that's just to say that it's a, it's a pretty big deal here. So that gives you a little, yeah. What does 100 mean with Utah? Well, they were saying this is, that it just means that they picked that number as the benchmark number to say this, this state has, is showing the highest and we're going to call that 100 and then we'll rank everybody else. And I don't know if it's based on the number of Google searches or the, I, I don't know where that, what's behind that data, but um, it makes a lot of sense for Arizona to be one of the states where there's a lot of interest in it. And Tucson actually ranks in the top 10 cities in the United States, Phoenix doesn't. But Tucson is ranked among the top 10 cities in the United States in terms of the availability of pickleball courts. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of gives you a, an impression of what's happening on the national level. Yes? Could you tell me more about your research of, um, on the recent news report about um, the malls now being turned into pickleball courts and you, you know, emphasis with a lot of city chambers doing that and voting it in? Um, so I, I don't. I didn't actually do research on malls being converted into this, but this is one of the things that is happening up in Prescott. I just talked to some friends who um, I was actually invited to go and wasn't able to, but there's a place in Prescott. Has anybody been there where it's, do you remember what it's called? No. Uh, you pay 20 bucks and you can go all day and it's all kinds of indoor things, but it includes pickleball uh, as, as an option. Yeah, it's a very useful thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think Arizona Mills Mall is putting in pickleball yes. courts. 20 of them or something? 24. 24 of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So obviously people aren't doing this because they're um, not expecting people to come and play. <laughs> so it's, it's just, it's one of those things. We don't know what the future holds. It may be that in 10 years, pickleball will be displaced by the next best great thing. We don't know. But for right now, the trend is definitely for years has been this way. And now it's just at that exponential growth phase. So your numbers when you were saying the use and all of that, um, the bands and all that, are these single time that people clock in, or can one person clock in seven, eight times and count in seven, eight times? Now, so these are actually 48 million different individuals who say they have played pickleball at least once in the last 12 years. There is data saying what, how many people would say that I played more than eight times, how many people would say more than whatever it is. So, you know, anyway. Yeah. As I, I would say, I, I don't want to die on the hill of this data. When you look for stuff online, you could be, you know, sometimes you look at it and say, I don't yeah. think that can actually be yeah. true. But, yeah. but, right. but I think that the trend, at least, is pretty much undeniable. I mean, we can all say that we, you know, what this feels like. Yeah. I, I don't see where pickleball beats out golf anywhere. Okay, well, I'm not so what I, I didn't say in terms of revenue, I didn't say in terms of the number of rounds that are played, just the number of people who play pickleball far exceeds the number of people who play golf in the United States. It takes several hours to play golf, and it takes only 12 minutes to play pickleball. How many games do you play versus golf? No, I just thought Okay, let's let's just pull this in and so that there's only one person talking at a time, Susan. I just found it interesting. I like to watch the house hunting shows on TV. And in the last week, and I don't watch it that often. And I watched two different episodes where people mentioned that one of the main reasons they're searching for uh, one of the most important things in their house search is availability of pickleball in the area. 
And I don't notice that I've seen that so much in the last few years, but all of a sudden it's like, bam. One guy's like, I'm not buying a house unless there's enough room for me to build my own pickleball court in my backyard. I'm like, wow, okay. <laughs> so yeah. He's really determined. But yeah. Actually, there, so, are, there are realtors that have said, that have, have witnessed exactly the same thing that you mentioned, Susan, that they are being asked about what is the availability of local pickleball courts. Um, there's actually somebody sitting in this room that moved here because this person came to a tournament that was being held at Marinette and looked at this. You know, Marinette, when Marinette was built, I think, was it 2015, 2016, Chris? 16. 2016, I think. I found the article saying that when the, uh, the, the contract award was made was in March of 2015, but 2016 it was built, and it was a one-of-its-kind sort of thing at the time. There, there wasn't any other pavilion like this. And when people come to a tournament here and see that as an option, they're just like, wow. And that person came from Massachusetts and said, wow, I want to live there. Would that person like to identify himself? <laughs> Dave, and I think there are dozens of people that actually have moved to Sun City because of that. That's a number that we don't capture because those people don't go to the visitor center and say, tell me about pickleball. Today, if people want pickleball, they don't call the visitor center, they call the pickleball club. You know, you just go on, you Google the, the pickleball club and you find out. But we do have, you know, we're finding that it, it makes a big difference that uh, for a lot of people that are interested in pickleball. I also, I also think that indoor facilities like that are really important, especially here in in Arizona, you need the indoor facilities so you can really use it year-round because nobody wants to be out in that. that yeah. Heat and, uh, well, so the, the pavilion is, I have played at six o'clock in the morning when Marinette <laughs> opens on a day that got up to 118 degrees and it was sort of tolerable until about 7.30 yeah. in the morning. Yeah. Um, yes, it makes a difference. Um, but obviously if they're like in Chandler, uh, if you build and you completely climatize it, then you're not dependent on weather at all. Right, right. Yeah. All right, so anyway, this is what do we have in Sun City right now? We have two rec centers that have pickleball. So I think in 2014, the seven courts were built at, uh, at Mountain View. Um, and I, Chris, if I get my numbers wrong, please feel free to correct me, but I think that's what it was. And then up at Marinette, where we have the pavilion, there are 12 outdoor courts and eight semi-indoor courts that are there. The building there is 35,000 square feet. Um, and uh, that's what we have right now. The club itself was chartered in 2003, according to the new website that we have. So it's 20 years old. We have about 1,150 members. Um, and uh, I'll show you some data about, over time, what membership has been like. And some of the, the things that a pickleball club does, so let me explain first of all, that the pickleball club is not, does not have dedicated space. So they don't have the exclusive use of these facilities. Anybody that's a member in Sun City is free to go and play pickleball there. If you're a member of the club, you are able to take part in club activities. And some of the things that happen are ladders, round robins, the drop and play that I referred to earlier. Social play, it's, it's a group of people, they have a certain number of courts assigned at certain hours of the week, and these are people that we want to play for fun, we don't want to play for competition. Okay, so it's just a different, a different approach to it. Modified play, this is for people that are mobility impaired. Um, say, you know, I, I, I want to stay active, but I'm not very good at my feet. So there are people who come to this in walkers, actually, and you change the rules a little bit. You say you're allowed to, the ball's allowed to bounce twice before you hit it. And it's really, you know, it's a wonderful opportunity. We have a lady on our, um, in our club who is, um, had a brain, tum brain tumor surgery and is not able to walk without, uh, her balance is completely affected. She comes and she plays in her wheelchair. So that's kind of neat to see. But there is this 80 plus group that we have. The Friday Night Social is a group of usually couples, but it doesn't have to be couples. And they bring food and they start at 5.30 and they play um, um, a series of games until about 7.30 and then they go out to the pavilion and eat together. So very social. The club also puts on fun days. The reciprocal play is a, 
if you like don't necessarily do tournaments, but you want to have a little bit of an edge, this is Sun City versus Sun City West. We've done this for six months, once a month during the high season. In the past, it's been, uh, I think, October through March. Uh, one month, Sun City West hosts it. The next month, Sun City hosts it. Um, 72 players, so each, each uh, team sends a, a flight of A players, B players, C players. And it's just a, you know, a great way if you want to have, it's not only for fun, mostly for fun, but you don't end up having to pay the fees to be involved in a national tournament or anything. That's really fun. Um, and then the club does host a couple of tournaments each year. And we'll have, uh, Dan, what, like 450 people that will come? From all over the country. From all over the country. They come to play in a tournament that usually goes for three days. Four days. And the three days is there's a day for men's, a day for women, and a day for nymphs. Yeah. Um, is there a charge for that tournament? Yes, because it is a USAPA sanctioned tournament, you have to be a member of USAPA, which is costly, and then each tournament that you sign up for has a fee associated with it. Okay. So that's that's like if you if you want to have something sort of competitive but not to be involved in that kind of money, the reciprocal play is a great option to that. And there is another thing that has developed is something called the Apple League. Um, so a lot of people in the club got involved in this. This is not restricted to Sun City, but it has grown exponentially. There's a, what is it, Dan? I think there's a West Valley, East Valley, North Valley. Right, there's and different, there's different RV parks and, right. you know, Bantana Lakes and Pueblo El Mirage and things like that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was actually, I played this year for the first time and it's, it's based on, uh, yeah, there's women's, there's men's, there's mixed, and it's based on your ranking. So you get some kind of a ranking that determines sort of what your, that is based on what your skill level is. So you might pay, play in a 3.5 women's Apple League, and that means that you just get together with a group of people, you pay $20 for the whole season, and you end up playing Pueblo El Mirage, you play at Pebble Creek, you play at Westbrook Village, whatever it is, and you get a chance to be exposed to some of the play in the area. I saw a hand back here. Yeah. yeah a question about the reciprocal um, games between Sunset and Sunset West. Mm -hmm. Do they pay their guest fees when they come here and we no. pay our guest fees when they go there? No, that's part of what happens when you have a reciprocal agreement is that they those fees are, uh, as long as it's reciprocal, we don't have to charge How those are those fees. players identified? Well, it's not open play. You have to sign up, and so you sign up in advance for this, and you have, you know, exactly this number of people at in the A flight, this number of people in the B flight, and you know who you are. And so. it requires a fair amount of paperwork. I'm we sure. No. Where's Chris at? Does that uh, revenue you mentioned, and even go back to RCFC? Yeah, Chris, can you tell us, so revenue from the tournaments, what's the deal with RCSC? The revenue goes to the club. Um, the, the, one tournament does it, though, I think, right? One tournament does and one tournament doesn't, I think. We pay for and, one. You well, give us one free, and we pay you for one. Right, but you take any revenue from the, the sign-ups. Right. For, for the participants of the, of the tournament, it goes to the Correct. club. And one, we, you, you pay a rental fee for the courts, and one, you, you don't pay. Yeah, so I think it's like with the players, that you get one yeah. that's free and then exactly. pay for the others. It's the same situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it is, it's, it's actually, I think, our largest source of income, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yeah, by, by far. far. <laughs> by far. So, you know, the fee to be a member of the club is $20 a year now, I think. Right. Yeah, $20 a year. Um, that gives you the right to be involved in any of the club events there. But the... The club does purchase balls, for instance. You don't have to have your own balls when you go to the court. There are balls there, whether you're in the club or not. So the club is actually financing <coughs> balls for anybody that comes to play. Yeah. Where does the rest of that money go? Um, well, yeah, I could, the club yeah. takes, so that the club takes it, for instance, quite for instance, a large amount. Yeah, for instance, when we put in windscreens around it, the club paid for that to take place. So even though the, the windscreens benefit everybody, not just the club, the club has paid for that. Or the grandstands that we have so that you have seating areas out by the North Courts at Marinette, those were each $14,000 a piece. So we've got two of them. The club paid for that with the money that they take. And, and once we purchase it, it becomes RCSD property. 
Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we will buy things yeah. and then I have to get with Chris and they'll, the, their people will install it. Like we just put in some new fans. We purchased the fans with RCFC installed. Yeah. So the, 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 all that information is available, is publicly available. There's a treasurer's report, and every quarter we have an announcement of how much money is in the account. And, you know, purchasing balls and all the upfront work for a tournament before you end up getting the registration fees. You have to be able to pay for your referees, to pay for you know everything that goes on there. Okay, we know Sensity and pickleball is popular nationwide. What is your bottom line? How many courts do you want? How many can, buildings do you want? Can, can, can you to <laughs> that is my next to last slide, right. Jim. So, uh, <laughs> what are you yes, cutting the case? I had a question. Yeah. With all the revenue that is coming, okay. what has the club done with the money at Mountain View? We haven't done much at the Mountain View with that money. For one thing, we thought they were going to be torn down. That's true. Um, so we haven't done a whole lot at the Mountain View with that money. Most of the improvements we've made with the money has been in the Mountain okay. And the other thing is that because there are only seven <coughs> courts there, you can't really have any club events at Mountain View because there aren't enough courts. So you the, can't run a ladder, you can't run around Robin. There's just all, you can't. There's very very little that you can do in terms of club events at Mountain View with just seven courts. All there. the things she has in the events, none of those can take place at the Mountain View. Okay, I was just curious. How many courts do you need to do that? Uh, I would say at least 12. 12. 12. Okay. Yeah. At least. Yes, yeah. Okay. Does <clears throat> Mountain View have the accommodation parking, parking wise, to to have this this big mm -hmm. tournament or renovation or whatever we're doing? So, so, this, so right now the tournaments don't take place at Mountain View, they take place at Merrimack because we have 20 courts there and only 7 courts at, at Mountain View. Parking is an issue, the parking lot is not adequate to handle it, but there's people on the club, all, all are required to put in a certain number of hours of, of volunteer work and one of the things that you can volunteer to do is to be a parking monitor during the tournaments. And so partially, we use street side parking. We make sure that nobody is coming onto the parking lot that doesn't have the right to do that during the tournament time. And we always keep parking available for swimming and the fitness center and the posse helps us with all of that. We never had a parking problem with our theater. Okay, so um, so I think that we can sort of move, but we've gone from what the national picture is now to more the, the Sun City itself. I don't know how many of you know this, but in October of last year, National Ge Geographic actually ran an article that um, they came and, uh, and did some, um, some interviewing and ph photography. This is actually at the Marinette Center. So this is the early morning. You see the sunlight coming in by dawn. This is Jim, who's 91 years old now. But pickleball is for everyone inside America's fastest growing sport. It was a, one of the features that existed. Um, so here we go. This is the club membership. And I want to make a disclaimer right up, right up here. Well, with this number and the next number, which is the actual usage. Um, so, well, this number right down here, you can see that in 2011, we were below 300 members. If we're at 1150 right now, I talked to Dan earlier. We have a, always every year in September, October, November, we have a huge influx of new membership. We're expecting that by the end of this year we'll easily have 1,300 if not 1,400 members. And Bill Booth, who is actually a former is a club member and he was the president of the USAPA, the National Pickleball Association for a number of years, he's the one that brought pickleball to the Phoenix area. Um, Sun City Grand was the place, first place where you could play pickleball in Phoenix, and he was the one who brought it there. He thinks that we'll probably have... 3,000 in the next two years. 
So we're yeah, looking at you know that the potential for again that we expect that the growth will be as explosive in terms of the club membership as it is on a national scale right now as well. So, yeah. Um, I just wanted to back up on Anna's comment because uh, back when four or five years ago with one of those tournaments, I was at the Leather Crafting Club mm -hmm. and your team did not let me in as a RCSC member to the club. I had to go park in the neighborhood three blocks out from the three blocks of people lined up to get in for these tournaments from other yeah. parts of the city. And I know that one of the concerns with the next the Mountain View Center for many residents at one of our board meetings was, uh, <clears throat> you know, how's it going to affect our neighborhood? So when you start talking about numbers coming in and using parking elsewhere mm -hmm. and rejecting RCSC, so it wasn't you can come in and leave the outsiders out. Mm -hmm. I had to go and park elsewhere. Yeah, but that happens for the fall fair too. Mm -hmm. At, um, at Sunday. Sorry, I'm just referring to that fall. I know, but that's another event that we have at Sunday. Well, pickleball sounds as if, you know, RCSC has a one time yeah, that's, it's like that's fine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I think we're all in favor yeah. of that. It's just the fact right. that we get into a one club monopolizing parking all over the Right. Two turns. Two turns. Just, just a second. Okay. All right. Let's have um, let's have Dan. Well, I can't argue that that's probably a it can happen. Like I said, we we do have hire the posse. We have volunteers, and we do keep a certain amount of the parking lot that people that are participating in that tournament cannot use that parking lot. And I also want to just say we're talking. We're not talking this happening once a week, it happens twice a year. So, so it might be a little, I can't argue, it might be an, an yeah. inconvenience a couple of times a year. Well, it just sounded like a scary so, and that's why I brought it up, that this is going to be increasing trifold. Right, it's not, not to suggest that we would be having tournaments four or five, six times a year, that's not what I'm suggesting. I'm just saying that the actual growth of homegrown pickleball players, we can expect them to be high. So we have two hands here, here, and then here, okay? I belong to the dancers, the, the, the palms, the, the tap dancing, all of the dance groups that we work out at, at, at Marinette. And when we're, we've got how many palms that have a car, and they work, they work diligent. Do they bring any money into the, to uh, RCSC from the, all of the marching they do? So what I'm saying is when they, when you have a tournament, there is a room in the parking lot for the people that use the dance studio. I've had no trouble when I've gone to dance. They ask me right there when I pull in, um, well, are you here for pickleball? And I say, no, I'm here for dance. And they allowed me to go right in and park my car. So, how, many, how many times have you done that? I mean, I have an experience. So. I, 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 every time I've gone there, it presentation today too so let's move on to the next slide here so this is court use um, monitored activity report and this is where I want to make a disclaimer so you know this is the idea that anytime you um, walk in to Marinette or Mountain View you should be registered as a one-time user for pickleball that has sometimes worked and it has sometimes not worked very well there was a time when they weren't checking at Marinette, you walked in and they didn't mark you down as pickleball, or they did, and, and so some of these numbers are a little bit misleading, and if anything, they're, it's an under-reporting, uh, largely because at Mountain View, you don't actually have to go past the monitor's desk in order to get to the pickleball. You can walk right into the pickleball courts, and there is a sheet there where you can write your name down, 
and your number, and you know, at 6.30 it's taken into the monitor and they enter it into the system. But, you know, if you can't find the sheet, it blew away, or you forgot to sign in, you know. Yeah. So these numbers, take them with a little bit of a grain of salt, but I think they're still, the trend is again undeniable. There's a sign there at that gate asking people to check in at the monitor. Don't they pay attention to that no. sign? No. 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 Some people that uh, very rarely does somebody stay for less than uh, for less than an hour. Very very rarely, but you know some people are there for four or five hours. So they took three as an average, and each time somebody gets clicked in to do that, that's what's represented here. So you can see down here that including both Marinette and Mountain View back in 2013, we were under 17,000 individual registrations to play. Over here, this number is just a tick under 70,000 in 2022. So you can see this, of course, was the pandemic, uh, but you can see a very, very noticeable trend. I mean, you've gone to you know three times what it was 10 years ago, and it's just a steadily rising trend. And based on the national data that we see, there's no reason to expect that that trend is not going to be ongoing. All right, all right, next. Slide here, please. Okay. So this I thought was just, um, this is the total number of people that register to use each of our seven different sports centers. So we're not including the Grand Center here. But you're looking at this and you can see that over the course of the year in 2022, this was the number of people. So over 300,000 people used the Bell Center. Fairway was a little over 200,000. Marinette was 161,000. Um, and you can, of course, see Oakmont, Mountain View. And I'm not trying to make a statement about this. I understand if Mountain View hasn't been cared for well, people avoid, they don't go there to work out because the, the fitness room isn't nearly as nice as the one that's at Fairway. So you drive past that one and you go to Fairway. I, I get that. Mm -hmm. But my point is simply to say that Marinette is actually, I think, in terms of square footage, and I don't know, Kevin or, or Chris, if you know this, it's one of our smallest properties in terms of the, uh, I know when Del Webb built it, you know, he, the deal was that when people in phase three, he promised them he was gonna build a rec center, and then he didn't. And they all went, you know, this is a contractual, you know, a problem you're not keeping it, so he decided, I'll put in a little one, and that's what became Marinette. But I think that it's very telling that Marinette has the third highest usage, and that is clearly because they have 70,000 uses of that that are for pickleball. Yeah. Is that monitored usage? Yes. So that doesn't count all the people that came in to uh, uh, Mountain View for uh, seeing uh, plays and so forth? Correct. Right. Right. So right. plays are not That's right. right, the plays are not right. Right. So right. right. So that isn't really yeah. I, I don't think they are anyway. I don't know. I don't know. I have to look at the attendance <laughs> reported for that. I yeah. Yeah. yeah, you might be right they're about not, that. They're, yeah. they're not. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's not a fair sentence to tell you. The reason why yeah. Mountain View isn't being used a lot is because of its poor condition. It's not because we don't want to use it. It's because mm -hmm. everything there is exactly. old. So this, 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 this is, this is my that. point. I think yeah. we can change that, and we can yeah. turn Mountain View into a center like Marinette that gets that level of usage if we do the right things there that are based on what data shows. Oh, okay. So I, I really think that we're in a position to be able to create a center there that will be very, very, very highly desired and used by the community. But that's. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's go on then to. Okay. So. So this is just an attempt to show you, as somebody mentioned, you know, a real, a real estate agent, uh, you know, has potential home buyers that say, you know, can I play pickleball close by? That's one of the questions that is asked. And, you know, when people say, I'd like to move to Arizona, they have a number of different options about where they want to. What I've done here is just to look at our closest competitors, uh, and there 
there are actually, um, I guess this doesn't show all the ways. Um, yeah, so to give you an idea of, so Pueblo El Mirage is a combined RV and home area just on the other side of the wash up here on Bell. The reason I put Green Valley in here was that uh, Bill Cook always looked at Green Valley, which is outside of Tucson, as the, th the, oh, yeah, that's this, right. the place that was closest to what we are like. Um, so that's why I added that. Um, Pebble Creek is down in Buckeye, Avondale. Westbrook Village is just right across uh, from Union Hills. For Sun City Festival, Sun City Grand, Sun City West, and Sun City. So what people often do is to say in terms of density, you know, how many pickleball courts do you have? Um, obviously, it depends on how large your community is, whether the number is good or not. So if you look at the number of rooftops here, you look at the number of courts, and you end up with um, how many rooftops do we have for each one court that we have? And on the next, the next slide, I'll show you the, the data from a different perspective. But you're looking here at, um, so Sun City has 27,500 rooftops and currently has 27 courts. So we have uh, one pickleball court for every 1,018 homes that we have here. If you look at Sun City West, they have 26 dedicated courts. They have six courts that are dual use with tennis. So I can put two numbers in here. Um, so it's either one court for every 650 or 528 homes, Sun City Grand, and it's in increasing order here. So you can see that in comparison to the area, to the communities that are around us, Sun City is actually um, well, uh, they proudly wear the hat of being a last place. <laughs> How do you count your rooftops for uh, per apartment buildings? The actual dwelling units that okay, there are, so it's dwelling units, right? Yeah, and in Sun City that's true as well. This is not an apartment building; doesn't count as one dwelling unit. And we have, you know, condos that are like that. It's each dwelling unit. And um, the reason I this is I just mentioned this to somebody earlier. I've called Pueblo El Mirage I don't know how many times, and nobody knows. And, <laughs> so yeah, nobody knows what they have. They're still building and still selling, and that may be one reason why they're reluctant to say some kind of a number. But I think that there's a two-year-old piece of it that says they have 388 RV sites, and the lady I talked to today said we think that we have about 60% RV sites and 40% homes, but. Whatever. If if that's the case, they might you know they might be around a thousand there. I don't I really don't know. But they have 26 courts. And somebody told me who was it that told me that they actually have 32 courts. Somebody just mentioned that they have. They just recently built one facility that has 24 courts. It may be that they have some other courts elsewhere as well. All right. So let's move on to the next one, and I'll show you this. So this is just a different way of looking at that same data, the number of pickleball courts versus the size of the community. This is how many courts they have per 1,000 rooftops. So you can see Pebble Creek is up here, Sun City Festival, Sun City Grand, Sun City West, Sun City. If we moved from having 27 to having 45 pickleball courts, we would catch up with Sun City West. All right. Yeah. All right. So about the option two, this was um, so option. Let's option one. Actually, the original plan had envisioned adding four courts to the seven that were, are currently there. There are two tennis courts there that don't have very high utilization, and the idea was that we can turn those. I I have to stop you there, Karen. Yeah. We we don't want to. I think we've already acknowledged that the usage at Mountain View is not reliable, and the Mountain View courts, uh, tennis courts, are just not played because they're not usable and um, they're they're dirty, they're not washed. They're, okay. So, so, all right. I'm just I'm just okay. saying that the plan so was we, whatever the reason was we, the plan we want with, that to stay there. with option one <laughs> was to convert those for whatever reasons into four. Pickleball courts, so that there would end up, you would end up having 11 there. And option two changed that all, and instead of adding four courts to the seven, it demolished the pickleball and several the courts that were there in phases one and two with some sort of vague promise that maybe in phase three some courts would be able to be built. So instead, the question was, what do we do if we're already underbuilt at 27 courts? 
and we get rid of those seven, what do we do? And you know, the promise was made that there would be alternative courts that would be available. And so instead, they envisioned converting the four late lieutenant courts into pickleball courts. And originally, I think the thought was, OK, how many pickleball courts can you get there? And without expanding the footprint, you're pretty much limited to six pickleball courts. If you start with an underbuilt and underbuild, and you tear out seven of them and you replace them with six, you're not really moving in the right direction, are you? So instead, they said, well, OK, that's not going to be adequate. What if we expand the footprint? And by expanding the footprint, they were able to get um, a drawing that has 13 pickleball courts at Lakeview. Uh, what's going to happen with the construction going on while that's uh, being played? The construction going on where? At Mountain View. That's why they were talking about uh, uh, eliminating the courts during construction. Well, the 2021 board promised that an alternative would be playable before the first shovel of dirt was turned at Mountain View. So the idea was that the Lakeview courts would be finished and playable before they began to, to destruct, demolish the courts at Mountain View. And so the promise made uh, to uh, those of us at Mountain View uh, is being delayed at this point too. Is that correct? Well, what right now the Mountain View too? plan and the building of the Lakeview pickleball courts has been stopped by the 2023 board, yes. That's why we're all here. Yeah. yeah. That's why you're all, all here. That's why they sat with me. No. No. How long do we listen to one? Okay. So, so anyway, um, so but there, so there are just a number of concerns with that. One of them being is Lakeview. <coughs> sorry. You know if. Is Lakeview really, so the 2023 board is saying, is Lakeview really the place where we want to have pickleball courts? Do we want to have 13 pickleball courts at Lakeview? That's a big discussion. We're not going to go there today, but there are some reasons to think that it's not really the best place in the world to have it. One of them being, that is our most serene and beautiful mm -hmm. spot. And do you want to, 150 feet away from lakefront property, do you want to have 12 foot chain link fences with black acoustical panels on them to try to dampen the noise? Mm -hmm. That would just be, that would be one reason why you might think it's not a great idea. Um, so, and then I also just wanted to mention that one of the interesting things about this is that, the, that if the Mountain View tennis courts are to be uh, converted, um, the Mountain View, so I have a slide later on showing you what the dimensions of a pickleball court are. Um, how many pickleball courts you can get out of a tennis court is dependent on what the original size of the tennis court is. It turns out that the tennis courts at Lakeview are on average 10 feet shorter than the tennis courts at Mountain View. So in order to double the number of courts, you have to be able to put courts this way, right? You can't just line them up this way. To do this, you need to have 64 feet plus 64 feet plus at least a five foot walkway plus a sidewalk on the outside of it. In order to do that, you're having to expand towards the mini golf course at Mountain View by a, just under 30 feet, okay? The Mountain View tennis courts are, instead of being 112, are 120, 121, 122 feet. So they require 10 feet less of an extension towards the building, and it's not going up a hill, and it still allows enough money, enough space to get between there and the building that's currently there. So it's just, it's one of the things that we found out this year, we didn't know this, but converting the courts at, um, at Mountain View would actually be probably a much easier construction process than converting the courts at Lakeview. Yes. Right. Current. The current option, too, that we're sitting on right now, though, has eliminated all, all the tennis courts and pickleball altogether. Yes. And that, so this at Mountain View. Yes. So that isn't even an option. If we're going with option two, it isn't even an option to, right. to convert anything because it's all just gone. Well, what option two has been suspended, and that's one of the things that we're looking at saying, is that really our best option? And we, uh, there's some of us that feel it's not, which is the reason that we voted to suspend it. Yeah. Thanks. You were talking about a, a two-level pickleball building, which makes sense for you know what you need 
Yes. How so many, how many would so we, like? we do have a drawing for phase three of pickleball. And I've talked with Bill Cook about this at quite some length. And he's like, yeah, it was just sort of to get something on paper. I told like you that the pavilion at Mountain View, or at, at <coughs> Marinette, is 35,000 square feet. It has eight pickleball courts on the inside of it. The building that is on the plans, and I can show you the plans for phase three, like this could happen, is 14,000 square feet and has 16 pickleball courts in it. Oh, <laughs> okay. I, that's pixie dust to me. I mean, I just, you know, it doesn't make any sense to me how you can take half the size of it and put in twice the number of, of, of courts. I don't see that happening. Not to mention the fact that I would urge you, if you haven't done this before, go to Marinette, Sit there and look, sit close to the pavilion and look at it and imagine that much building on top of it. A 65 foot building. A 65 foot building, a six story building. But you don't need it yeah. that high, do you? Why do you need it that high? Well, you do because the playing space, I think it's required to be 24 feet and then you need to have lights and then you need to have the ceiling and then you need to have, you know, the, to put the next thing. I mean, you're talking about. A lot of empty space. Yeah, when you go there and you look up there, it's like a lot of empty space. Right, but you, if, if you think about it, your lights can't enter. I mean, there is a there is a, a limit. People lob in pickleball, and there, there's a requirement of how high the space has to be that's not intruded on by lights. So, yeah. Okay, so let's move on. I'm a little concerned about time here. So. Excuse me. So, frankly, I don't see how I can do a presentation after this. But I'm going to finish up and somehow postpone what I was going to do because it's a terrible death to be talked to death. Said part of my so I just feel like I'm giving too much info in one meeting. It's kind of not a fair position. I mean, okay. this is just not good. Amen. Fair to us. Amen. I guess. Oh, I guess. Oh, right. This. This is a two-hour meeting, folks. Yeah. And if you need to change topics right now, go ahead and change Let's do that. Yeah. Okay, so we, we are on, um, so, I, uh, the, the, so I'm on uh, slide, slide 14, slide, slide 15. And I, I mean, I, 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 I can okay. quit with slide, with slide 16. How about that? Okay, so we'll do this one, this slide, and one more slide. So some common misconceptions. Oh, can you back it up again? Yeah. So, whoop. okay, so here, the co some common misconceptions that um, I feel like it's just worth putting this out here. You know, people often talk about dual use. So that's like, you know, Sun City West said, okay, the uh, 26 courts that we have are really crowded. We're running into problems there. How about if we take the tennis courts, which are not as useful, and take three, take three of them and turn them into each two pickleball courts? So one pickleball court on one side of the tennis net, one pickleball court on the other side. You can do that. Nobody's very happy about it. The tennis people don't like the fact that there are all kinds of lines there that don't make any sense. The pickleball people are dealing with double lineage, and it's. It, it, if you have to do it, you do it. The other thing is that concept of dual use. If you go to Minnesota, you will find in, com in communities, they've got a community center, they've got a gymnasium in there, and there are two hours every morning where you can play pickleball on the gym floor. Um, and that bleeds into this next question. Um, you can play pickleball on the gym floor, and it's preferable to not play pickleball at all, but it's not a great solution. So if we're talking about wanting to do excellent things. I would encourage us not to think in terms of dual use and not to think in terms of, well, we could just do this on a, on a wooden floor. The ball plays, you play with a different ball, the ball plays differently off a wooden floor than it does off of an out, outdoor surface. Uh, isn't this supposed to be informational, not options yet? Yeah, it is. That's an information that we, she wants you to know. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, so this is another thing that I, we often hear, and I think we addressed this briefly beforehand. You know, people, well, we could put two courts there, and we could put four courts there, and we could put six courts there, but as Dan said, any activities that you do as a club are, you know, somebody said, how many do you need? We, basically about 12, 12 courts in order to be able to run a club event. So there are times, for instance, that one of the most popular ladders that we have, they cut it off at 52 people. 
and 48 people can play on 12 courts. Okay, which means that at Marinette, there are only eight courts left over for anybody that's not in that ladder to play. Okay, so that's, it's just, it's, uh, I think we're much better off probably with maybe one or two, two locations with more courts at each one rather than multiple locations with a few courts here and a few courts there. So we talked about drop and fly play and other structured events. That's what, what Pickleball lives from. The weather conditions impact is both heat and I think the thing that um, wasn't addressed when you know Chris talked about rain days that impact pickleball. This this winter has been a very windy winter, and wind is just as deadly to pickleball because you've got this hollow whistle ball thing. It's just as deadly to pickleball as rain is, and so um, that's an issue. Um, there was a time when originally the, the Lakeview courts were talked about and it was said, oh, we'll have courts. So of the 20 courts that are at Marinette, there are four that don't have fences between the courts. So 16 of them, each court is individually fenced. And then there are four that don't have fences between two adjacent courts. Um, I counted one time recently I played in a 12-point game. We were interrupted eight times by a ball coming over from the neighboring court or our ball going over on the neighboring court. It's not, let's not talk about that as an option in order to save space. That's, um, fences are really important. And this is also it's okay to skimp on the out-of-bounds plane area. So a court is uh, 20 by 44 feet. That's the actual in-play area, but you need all that out, you know, you play, you stand out of bounds when you're waiting for the serve to come, right? And that's an area where they say you should have seven feet on each side and 10 feet at the, at the back end. And out in surprise, they built brand new courts out there. And I, if you go there, they, they had no reason to not make the courts more generous. And for some reason or not, instead of having the 10 feet between the baseline and the, and the fence behind you, it's only seven, seven or eight feet. You bang into those fences in the back because of that. You know, you just, you don't want to do that. You don't want to skimp on that. So the USAPA has said, to get the 20 by 44, we need to have a 34 by 64 footprint for each court. Um, and then lighting issues, we, uh, yeah. The lights at Marinette make evening play wonderful. The outdoor lights are really pitiful and a lot of people are like, I can't even play out there at night. It's unfortunate. All right. Since we're not talking about alternatives, yeah. we'll probably skip the last. Right, well just this is the, would be my last, my last. So I think this is the critical question is that given what we know about national trends, what we know about our trends here in Sun City, as we're looking now at our options that we have, what do we think would be the appropriate number of pickleball courts when we have built our last court? Assuming that, you know, we don't have other property available to us and we're limited to what we have. So I, to me, this is a question that's, that, that we should be thinking about based on the data that we know nationally, locally, what would be the number of courts that would be appropriate for Sun City. Great. Thank you. Do you, you want to take a, uh, a short break? Yeah. Can no? you go for it? Yeah, I think I'm not a question. Questions? Um, mine is not a question, actually. It's a comment. It's my understanding that you are a member of the RCS board. Is that correct? Then I first, this is the first meeting I've ever been to. And I'm not, I will admit up front, I'm not a pickleball player. I really think it's a great sport for people who would enjoy it. I have a good friend who broke her shoulder on a pickleball and needed emergency surgery. I know that's beside the point. This is way too much information um, in my book, you know, and uh, as an RCSC board member, I think it's a real conflict of interest for you yeah. to be involved in this controversial discussion. Someone else should have presented this. Okay, well, I have been accused of having a conflict of interest before. <laughs> yeah, right. I just, I just want to say that I didn't come here to serve on this committee to hear complaints from the audience during a presentation. I came here today and each week for everybody to have an opportunity to share what they want the rest of us to know about their club. I shouldn't have to hear like, oh my gosh, she's still talking. This is ridiculous. It's it's very inconsiderate. Oh, oh, and those are she went I I I'm gonna stop the conversation, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Because these people have an important job to do. Yes. You have people on this committee, you have people representing the players, you have people representing the dancers, you 
that people are playing the water volleyball, but the pickleball players. The reason why, for example, uh, Director Rick Adams is up addressing you about pickleball is because she has first-hand knowledge about pickleball. But so do they, other excuse players. Excuse me. Please. Uh, I would submit to you on this committee, as lovely as the committee is, there probably aren't you know, too many pickleball players on the committee. You have Dan. Dan could have made the presentation, I suppose. But Director Nick Adams is one of the chairs of the committee. So it's appropriate for her to have made the presentation. These folks are getting, the committee is in its phase of getting as much information as it can. It invites the members of the community to be here and available to hear what the committee is doing. The fact that the chairman of the committee are gracious enough to take questions from the audience, excuse me, what's that? Catch you there? Uh, you know, it does lengthen the presentations that people are making. We love your questions, that's great. But please feel comfortable knowing that you have representatives from throughout the community involved, who are involved in all the aspects of the Lake View and the Mountain View process. We're going to put our trust in them that after they hear everything there is to hear about it, that they'll come up with some very good options of what to do. They're still in the discovery phase. No one's made any decisions about anything. And as Director Fast pointed out today, even after this committee completes its work, the membership will have more than ample opportunity to review the work of the committee. So please let the committee do its work. I think we'll get a very good product when we get to the end. Yes, ma'am. Real quick, this is also my first time. I've been reading about everything going on. I'm happy to hear that this kind of um, thought process is going on because it's not about me. I'm going to be dead and gone in a few years. <laughs> it's about keeping our community alive. Those people who are coming up 45 years old, in 10 years, they're going to be coming here. That's right. What are they looking for? Is that going to keep this community going? I'm so glad to hear that is what this is all about. Thank you, because my property and its value is preserved by this kind of work. Sure support everything you're doing. 
because arts are important in the city. So that's one way we can expand our perspective. The other is, and I'm so sorry, so John, you dutifully put out the wrong document on my classes. Uh, I just had eye surgery, so I'm just automatically going to my readers. Um, I sent the wrong document out, and I, it was a one page about our last meeting agenda. Nothing to do with anything. What I wanted to send out to you was a little something for you to read. Our put out by the National Council for the Arts. This is a slim 45, 50, 55 page document to read. No, I did that because there's important information that I'll glean off for you. But the expansion is, the theater is not a theater, it's a performing arts center, but it's also, well, what's the term I have? Just scribbled it down today when I was reading. Let's see, it's a... Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, read. Creative placemaking. Creative placemaking is what they're calling it. That a theater is a community center and is a place where not only do you see a play and walk out or see some dancers and walk out or whatever, but it's a place where people are transformed by the arts. It's a place where we get ideas. It's a place where there's an exchange of creativity. And so we have to have this broader vision of what a theater is to a community. And this is supposed to next week in a way, but please imagine they close off everything you know about Montague be a realtor taking somebody down the street to look at our lovely community, and they drive by that piece of brick, I cleaned it up, and, the, and they would say, and this is our theater! Yeah. I just wanted to keep in mind what, what an awful building and facility that is. Okay, next slide. Yes. Next slide. Okay, this is just to show what we presented. Next. Space for multiple forming art groups within Sun City. Okay, second, next. Okay. The position of the performing arts as a valid entity in the big picture of Sun City. I, I've always felt bad about Sun City. I love it, but it doesn't have a core. There's no downtown. There's no place for us to say we. So we need to build places where we all come together and share experiences. Because we don't have to downtown, they have coffee at you or a Starbucks or something. Next. Mm. Okay. These are all the a list of groups. I may have missed one or two. This is another group. Next slide. Okay. That bring up here. Okay. These are some of the organizations that would use the program arts center. There were three others, and I'm not sure why they didn't make that. I'll be in my scurry this morning. Ukulele Club. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Tip Top in the Palms, for sure. I think we're facing the other three. Next. Bob, you this is just a rough view that we can talk next time about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just wait for that for next time. I have much better pictures coming to me. Yeah? Yep. Okay. Sorry. Next. You get tired. <laughs> no, I'm fine. We asked them, are there any ways you can see for using this art facility? I told you that over half said, yeah, we can really see ways of using that performing arts center. Next, please. Um, why might the club not use it? And that was mainly because of size. Next. Okay. And what obstacles? We're just going to move through these. I just want to show you what we did at this PAC meeting. You know, I'm explaining the whole meeting by right itself. But next, please. Oh, oh, sorry. And, uh, and then we asked for their input to what, the, what changes would they make? Because these are the early plans that we were working off of. We said, what could we do to make this a, a, a usable space for you? Next. Okay. Yep, next. And I'm just going to click through these and move this again. Next. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and then we had a discussion, we had your thoughts. There was a big discussion. Go on, next, please. They actually love the building. Next, please. Okay. Yep. No. We're strong here as a group. And we were trying to get a consortium together. Now, this is going to pause and say, we had this meeting in September of 22. 
players um, in the summer got the idea of needing to have a performing arts group because we were hearing footsteps that there were those that wanted to make other uses of the guaranteed space that we had in Mountain View. And so we threw together a donut. Since September, we had a Saturday when we gave donuts and coffee, and people came and talked. And all these groups came, and we had a lively discussion. Thanks. <laughs> the combined membership of all the performing arts clubs is five, at that time was 500, with an average of 13,000 patrons per year. Think about that. Next. And how do we as a group get heard? Next. Who might we as performing arts clubs do? So this is all of our agenda, saying how can we get our word out? I mean, frank with you, for many, many reasons, that, that all in a large in a large measure got dropped. And we didn't follow through so we could there was illness, there was this and that. But this would there was a lot of energy and I'm sure we could regenerate that energy next. Okay, good to go. Next. These are all things we could do. Next. Next. Yeah. Well, that's what I've been doing. Next. <coughs> Okay, that's that's it basically. I think one more slide just I think to finish up. Yeah. All right, thank you. That was the presentation we did by and large. I tweaked some things just for information for you. Um, okay, just give me a question. All right, there is a you need to put a list of the clubs in the back. I can get you copies if you need it of the clubs. And uh, John has information too, right? I, yeah. I, I did hear from the bell ringers, and they also like Right, the bell ringers. Yes, the bell ringers, but like, they've moved from the churches. Right. 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 The, the hand bell ringers also contacted John, and I know they were on the list, and I don't know why they get dropped off. But yes, thank you. Um, I want to talk a little bit about that recent uh, article in the Independent. How many people read that one, the most recent one? Um, John and I were talking, it sounds like that came from, pretty much from a press release from RCSC. Yeah, can I, uh, so what, I, uh, I'm duty bound, uh, which means I have copper tunnels in them, uh, <laughs> after this meeting to write up a press release to circulate to the co-chairs. Okay. Uh, I forgot. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I've never forgotten anything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Gene reminded me on Monday that I was uh, somewhat delinquent, and I said, "Okay, tip, 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 type, type, type. Here you go. Don't show it to me." And it made made some rounds to some review. I don't recall that last piece. Okay. It was, uh, I don't, yes, Jean. Tom, are you referring to the piece that Susan Sue, was talking about in the independent and the sound views that John wrote yeah. about? Mm -hmm. the right, but it, there was no, it was anonymous. The, okay. there was, it was, we didn't even have a reporter's name on it. It wasn't, it was a, if you're talking about that. No, that's a different one. No, that's a different one. one. That's different. different. Oh. This one had no name to it. Okay. If I may, yeah. let me just remind everyone, on the RCSC website, we have a place for all of our documents, but you have to give them to me before I can get them on there. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Thanks, <laughs> Jean. Protect me. There is...
isn't that strange that it's that a source isn't written in, in an article like that? Is it from the RCSC or something that recognizes the source? I mean, that's a newspaper's fault, really. But I don't know what we're talking about, so there's no sense in okay. Either. Well, any of that, I thought it very, very biased and distorted. Mm -hmm. And I think last time there were complaints about something you written that the club that who appeared to necessarily feel was kosher. So oh, this, right. yeah. and this is yeah. a second example of that. And, and I when I put copies in the back, I'd be glad to send it out to whoever wants it. So Mr. Gene, of my response to the opinion on that. Yeah. Yes, it's right here and I'll post it on the website. Okay. I can send it with digital too. So. Tom? Yeah. The comment in there that and I've sat in these meetings, I know what goes on. It was a comment that almost sounded like we weren't sure if we should build a performing arts center. Right. Yeah. And I, I don't know where that came from because yeah, I've never was, heard that ever. Well, I mean, there were so many distortions. I don't want to yeah. spend time explaining it, but please, if you, hopefully my letter will come out this week in the Independent, but it, there were some very strange distortions in there and then on omissions. There was nothing about my comments over here about the, the problem with Karen doing a presentation. And the fact that you were very biased in your slides, that was not in there. So, Karen, for example, Karen had done her oh, what you I asked the question, oh, why right. is Karen presenting? And why are we sitting back in the back of the audience? Right, 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 right. Okay. Yeah. And, and you generously gave me this opportunity, which I appreciate. But then you got eaten into something. All right. Now, that's what I wanted to Mm -hmm. Talking about the expansion of the concept. We've talked about other groups who just that. These are the other things that we might use in such a facility. Mm -hmm. uh, other clubs can use it just for whatever. Having a meeting, whatever. Could be, there's in a rehearsal space that could be opened up for something. Lecturers and poets. All these things that are in our community, all these artists mm -hmm. who really don't have a place to present. And that's why it can get lost when you can statistics backwards. It's sort of like stocks, performance in the past, and not necessarily education and things in the future. Um, storytelling, we did, we had some great storytelling going on uh, with our club. Mm -hmm. And we have a storytelling evening, for example. You know, some of you have been to those, right? In the Valley, yeah, there's storytelling. Storytelling events in the Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, vocal and instrumental groups and solos. I mean, just somebody must, for example, I, I toured Mark Twain for 20 years. And I would love to, to make a deal with the RCSC to rent that facility to present Mark Twain once every six months or a year. I think that would be a great terrific turnout. But there are soloists, there are piano players, there's all sorts of artists that would come out. Um, for Sun City Players, we had the Parkinson's group, the Parkinson's singing group. It's wonderful. Phenomenal. This group of people with Parkinson's, they sing to improve their voices. And they performed for us, and I was I was in tears. So they could use that facility. That was phenomenal. Yeah. Um, sales and other business meetings. We could rent it out for sales meetings. For you know, the realtor needs to talk to his staff, that would be a perfect place. Uh, that would be a money generator too. Uh, local talent, but churches and other organizations I need to space that size for something in particular. Uh, RCSC meetings, I don't know if you've thought about that, but mm -hmm. not just the board, but other meetings within the organization. Um, oh, and the rehearsal room is a space about the size of the, the stage itself. And there's all kinds of experimental theater and things can be done there that I would really love to put on. Um, and of course, the, the whole field of dreams thing we've talked about, when you build it, they will come. That's the whole idea here. It's, we can't look at the past to say what this might be. We have to look at what could be, too. And you, we have no guarantees. But theater's been around for 4,000, 5,000 years. Pickleball's been around 40, 50. I mean, it's been in the popular sport only a couple decades. So is it a fad? Or is it actually the new direction? I, mean, I, I just want to ask that as an honest question. But I also heard you talking before the meeting that there's variations now of pickleball. There's platform ball, and there's 
the other one we were talking about. There's, yeah. mm -hmm. there's different ideations. Now, where are we going to settle down? Are we going to build something that isn't the ending fad, for example? All right. Costs. Many of above would generate revenue. And maybe some of the costs would be reduced. But we just were talking about we don't need to have chairs set up anymore. Yay! <laughs> you know? Because yeah. we, we pay a lot, we pay a significant amount of money to have all those chairs set up for every performance, and that won't happen anymore. Um, I learned just today that we spent almost $400,000 on architectural plans for this theater. That's 400,000, a good chunk of that 400,000 we could kiss goodbye along with the cost of inflation to somehow save money. Somehow this idea is that we're going to save money or use our money more wisely. Well, we've already spent almost a half million dollars. Um, and we don't know that we won't get use from the money that we spent and the work has been done. It's I'm too sorry. premature. It's too premature to suggest that that money would have been wasted. We don't know. That yeah, you, you can raise your hand if you want. If there are people who want to make comments, they can raise their hand. Um, well, I'm sorry. In the last presentation, I think questions was one of the reasons that got out of control because there was just so, so much going on in all directions. Well, and that's a lot. I, I don't mean to end on a down point. My major idea here. I want to emphasize that a performing arts center is a community hub. It's a source of enrichment. It's the way we all get richer. And I want us all to realize that that's the intangible part of a theater. And the benefits of that, along with just having this nice theater built there, and then people go by and with pride, point to it and say, we are a modern facility, just like they have in Sun City West, where people can go and enjoy theater at home kinds of arts. So that's my presentation in a nutshell. Questions and comments? Ooh, questions and comments? Yes? Tom, I don't think it's a case of should we build a performing arts center? No, or should we build? A louder, we can't okay. hear in the back. I'm sorry. I don't think it's a question of should we build a performing arts center? Or should we build pickleball courts? Or should we build five swimming pools? I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue is we have this much land and we have this much money. What's the best thing we can do with that money? Right. I know the players would absolutely love a wonderful theater. And we're going to get you a theater. It may not be exactly what's been drawn lately. And it's going to be 10 years later, the promise. Well, that we can't help. We can't help. Can help we can't help what happened in the past and things got changed and the whole thing. The purpose of this committee is to make sure we're spending our money the right way. Right, I understand. And that's for the entire community. I understand. You are going to get a performing arts center. Oh, yes. It you may know. not be 35,000 square feet. Maybe it's going to be 30,000 square feet. I'm just talking about feet. we being the bastard child in the family. That's what Oh, no, about. not at all. Well, we, we had a theater going, and then all of a sudden Pickleball came in and decided to take us I'm over. on this committee. I don't go to, I don't, I'm it's not a not player. It's not one or I'm, the other. I'm, I'm not a Pickleball player. I'm not a swimmer. I don't do any of that kind right. of stuff. I have no prejudice to anything. Right. I think a performing arts center is something this city needs, their town needs, and there's no question it needs it. But what does it have to look like? What, what could we, if we took something from the theater, would it really destroy your program to build a pickleball program? We have to balance them out and figure out what's right. the best thing well, there was for this a, area. But there was a whole pit process and the whole Yes. Consideration of what the needs of the community, and all of that was gone through. Oh, that was not gone through with pickleball. Yes. I just want to say, with building pickleball courts and building a performing arts center, we don't want to do a lateral move. We don't want to have the state of the art performing arts center where we still have to set up chairs. We don't want to take away pickleball courts and tennis courts and put in fewer. Yeah. So we don't want a lateral move. We should always be looking at how we can enhance and make it better. That brings up a point for me. Is, is, is anybody still thinking we can renovate that building? No. 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 I it's not an issue. It's not an issue. It's like no. whack them all. I keep, I keep no. knocking that one down and it pops up over there. No. Yeah. No. That's, That's an issue, issue for some history. people in the community, but it's, it's not an issue for us. Yeah. You do. I do. 
Oh, good, good. Yeah. Yeah. Because you got a concrete building, a cement block building, and you'd have to break up both sides and wow. add for the wick, because that has a space for actors in set pieces on the sides. Mm -hmm. okay. You need to build back because it's not deep enough for some of the flies that we want. You'd have to add an entire second floor for a rehearsal space and green room and on and on, but it's just not, besides this 80 year old stuff. I just want to say um, that that's what all of you are doing. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, leaving your preconceived notions at the door as community members, right. coming in, listening to all the folks, the presentations, well, then you're all going to sit, and the next phase is going to yeah. be probably the most interesting. Question, John. And I, I miss some of the early meetings, but I guess I'm confused because it seems like it's come down to. Pickleball needs this, we have to move the theater, blah, blah, blah. You know, but if this was a clean slate and started all the way from scratch, is that really what you were talking about? So if the original plan would be an option? I, uh, I have a couple of comments for you, John. Speak up, John. I have a couple of comments. He's got a couple of comments. <laughs> <laughs> First, I'm not appreciative of the players' clubs, activities, regard to this undertaking. Yelling and screaming and telling people they've gone too long. Yeah, I, I don't appreciate it at all. I don't appreciate Mark Twain coming and telling me that I said something that I didn't say. You said I was moving the players club off the premises. No, I Yes you did. That's a you yes you did. Now listen, I'm not wrong, please. Tom? I did not come here to go yeah, over the differences yeah. between people. What yeah. she said. Tom, so but, I have a comment to make as a new as a new community yeah. member, and I have a question for this man. Well, you're gonna have to wait until I'm done, sir. What? No. Tom, he's lost. The question. other thing is, please I think a performing arts please. center could be used for, for comedy please. night, for movie nights, for uh, Academy Award nights, you're cutting off all those conversations. You know, I, I'm sitting here going in my mind about all the different things the Performing Arts Center could do, and I'm having to overcome your approach. But I'm not going to give up. I am not going to give up. But yet, I, okay. I apologize for my behavior as my individual. No, but please. I don't want to say more about it when you're Okay, listen. I've been here for seven years in this we have not been able to come to any of these meetings because I'm turning 70 and I have to keep working. So this is the first time being able to even come. Oh boy. Hold these Let me say something to Mr. Spencer. I hope I pronounce it. It's a Swedish way. I'll take that. Because it's, okay. I appreciate what you said. I appreciate your passion. I really do. I, I was a performing arts. I, I was a professional musician for many years of life and then I became an engineer later on. So I have this passion for the arts too, okay? And when I read some of the stuff in the paper, the impression was it's all about the players' club, and that was it. Well, that was you the had an you, you had an opportunity to say, well, there are other groups that could use this facility now, like musicians and, and different yeah. artists, okay? And that's great. I I, I am now going to look more into it. Okay. I want to say I'm glad it's been paused. I really am glad it's been paused. From what I've read and heard, it doesn't look like it was thought out very well. Not against building anything for players. Not against pickleball, although I don't play it. I'm more a musician not for the arts. Um, so I would say that you've made me want to go look at this break. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'll take you through. I've only been there once yeah. because I haven't had time. I want to go look at that set and see what you're telling me. Yeah. I'm going to do that, but and because I now I have more questions because when I first got here, I saw Fairview and I saw there was this nice big auditorium that had a big piano and it looked like they were doing yeah. performances there. So in my mind, well, we've got to perform. I'm just saying what I came with in my mind. There was, there was a performance that I went to Sundown. We go to Sundown because it's close to us, and there was an, uh, a music group that was performing there, and I enjoyed it and I had no problem watching it. So. 
I'm not saying you don't need this facility. Don't take this wrong. I'm saying that it's a lot of money. And I also believe in not throwing uh, good money after bad money. You know, if you say, well, we spent 400000 that's a lot of money. Nothing to sneeze at. But we don't spend more money just because we don't throw good money. No, that's not. Yeah, so I'm here money. checking it out. I appreciate also what was said about the new ball cards. You know, but I see some things that I'm not getting information. Like, there's a lot of tension. And being an engineer in the background, I look at a couple of things. First of all, I want the problem defined. What is the current problem? Right. And what is the potential problem? And it's hard to do that when we get all the emotion involved. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want. And I like anecdotes. Anecdotes are great. But they don't, that's not facts. I mean, that's, somebody said, my butt hurt, therefore everybody's butt's hurting. <laughs> my butt hurts because I. <laughs> so I just wanted to say to you, I appreciate it, I appreciate it, and we need to just calm the rhetoric yeah. down. I appreciate it. I wanted to tell you, because I know you're very passionate, you made me want to look into it a little right. further. You haven't, quote, changed my mind, because I had made my mind up, yeah. but you made me go, oh, wait a minute, I didn't think about that. And that, that's one of the things I said in the, the article in my, in in my read it. letter to the editor was that, you're focusing in on just one group rather than seeing the expansiveness. And I, I just want to say, we're working on alternatives for the Mountain View Recreation Center. One of, part of that is the Performing Arts Center. There is a lot more to it than that. Yeah. So for you to say it's got to be us and nothing else, it's just, you know, you're upset we're talking pickleball. Pickleball is another alternative. It's not either or. We have more than one thing that needs to go into this rec center, and that's what we need to see. We need to hear from the people that would make the most right. use out of the rec center. So certainly pickleball needed an opportunity, and you needed an opportunity. Nancy? So Tom, and yeah. I spoke before, and it was on video, and I did a nice report about there were several of us during quarantine that worked three years on all sorts of design, and there were architects involved later, and many this is actually conceived with a lot of advice from professionals. And so they're there, all the plans are there with some very dedicated professionals. And I think it would be a shame for $400,000 to go away. Uh, but my concern is when the 2023 took over, we had the advice that wouldn't it be lovely to have one by the lake? Well, right away I'd say, well, First, we have to have all the clubs object and say, excuse me, you're taking away our view and our intentions. We have a property just set up for our needs. We love going there. We love rehearsing. We have all sorts of things that go on. And data, yes, when someone sends the drone for data or whatever they're sending to say there's only two people there. No, they're not. They're all over the whole Sun City. But tons of background and costumes, makeup, right. all the tickets and the you know, design efforts and, and scripts and pre-everything that is involved. Sure, we'd love to go have a room to sit in and talk and collaborate. We usually have to meet in homes. So there's additional rooms where you go. Right. And then all that is in place. It can all happen at Mountain View and still have room for pickleball, no, well, not excessive, and, and miniature ball and the things that are there. Oh, and wow. still not be a nuisance to the neighborhood. Wait. And then um, I'm just saying, whatever this data is, I really don't want to hear it anymore because our data, and that might be where we need to improve, we need to show what we have already. Absolutely. We've we got have a gift to, to you of a lot of work that's already been done. And oh, yes. it's ready to go. One more thing. Yeah. Theater people, we don't need big lobbies that say, look at me. That's, those times are gone. We're no longer in an era of opulence anywhere that I know of, unless you're out of Hollywood. You are looking at theater, Shakespeare in the Park. You're looking at anywhere on the streets. We just want to perform. And we'll give you our best. We do want good theater. We want good sound. We want good projection, the projectors for lights. We want that. We also want seats that everyone who's arthritic can sit in. They don't have those. Yeah, but and So what I'm saying is you've got a lot to go with. Let's keep going with that and show what we got. Right. We haven't shown them what we have. And I want to pick up on what you were saying at the beginning, too, which is 
there's the impression that this was just kind of a fly-by-night idea. Oh, a theater, we'll build one. But it was a 20-year process of a whole lot of citizens, a whole lot of experts giving input. And so I, I feel it's a denigration of, of what we all put into it. And I don't think any of us are turning that down. Um, we know there was a lot of work put into that. You can see it. Um, you weren't here for the first few meetings. Bill made sure the players was well represented yeah. here. So we have, we have talked a lot about the players. Right. And no one is saying the players are going to get cheated. We're not, we're not trying to cheat anybody. Well, we just want to make sure that you have your performing arts has their section of the community. I just want to say that distrust comes from the fact that we had what I considered a promise by the board to build a theater at this moment. And that rug got pulled out from under the project. I can't. And, I have nothing so that, to do with that. So but I'm here to make sure that's 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 the reason there's mistrust. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'm here. I, I didn't do that. I have no idea why that happened. I don't know what was the bottom line. Okay. I don't know why that happened. It doesn't matter why it happened. It happened. Now let's fix it and move forward. What's your name, guy? Michael. Michael. I just say Heschel. Hi, Michael. Um, <laughs> Be an engineer. What, what I want, what I've always wanted is to have all these ideas of where the theater might go. None of these places have been vetted. None of them have been had done feasibility studies. We don't even know if we can build a theater at Lakeview. We don't even exactly. know if we can build a theater at Sunwood. We don't even know. So before you start all your discussions of options, we, we, we see the writing on the wall. We're moving somewhere, most likely. Um, could you please give these people, could you, could you please ask for those kinds of information to say we can't even do it there. We can't even do it here. And that's one of our things, that's one of my questions. Okay. Is, is Lakeview even a possibility? Right. Has anybody looked at it? Is, is it a, could it happen there? And I've gotten and no one as far as I've, I've talked to a lot of people. No, no one has said, yeah, well, we did a feasibility study. Right. So and that's, I think, a part of this community. Is that an option? We don't know. Well, we want to perform for you, because Nancy was trying to soften me up. To and I want you to perform and have nice seats. We scenes. want to perform for you. <laughs> we want to give you all kinds of ways to think differently about yourselves and your relationships and the people around you and the world we're in. So we'd like that opportunity as soon as you can get around to it. Thank you. <laughs> of the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated and is intended for the sole purpose of informing our Recreation Center members. Any duplication, copying, transmission, broadcast or use including electronic and social media is strictly prohibited without the prior written consent from the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated. Thank you for watching.